Thanks to the supporters of channel member Todd Thomas. I don't think we're going to get relegated, which is awesome. We might not finish in the top five this year. We're just like a, a comfortable, boring mid-table team, which is kind of the dream for this season. Hello and welcome to part 120 of Born in the USA. I'm Kevin. Coming up on today's episode, we have two games for you in the championship. I'm not close to bored of saying that yet. We're away against LA Galaxy 2 and also away against Hartford. Since you were last with me, we actually won three games on the bounce in there. I was a little bit panicked here. I'll level with you. Um, we, yeah, that was, it was worrisome. Losing against Cal United in the, in the League Cup. I mean, they are top of League One. But that was alarming. And then getting battered at home. To be fair, it is by DC United who are just relegated from the Premier League and are probably going to win the league. So it's a pinch of salt situation. We then drew against Vegas and we hadn't won in four games and I was worried. And then Josh Pearson just decided to start hammering in the goals. Three wins on the bounce. Uh, we did then lose 3-0 at home to Philadelphia who are only eighth in the league. So... That brought us back down to earth a little bit. And this is what the championship table looks like. Eight games played. We're ninth, 14 points on the board. And we'll take that at the end of the season. Stop the count there, boys and girls. That'll do. That's absolutely fine. Um, but this is the team we're going to put out there for the game against LA Galaxy 2. This is a worry. These two can't play well together, apparently. I don't buy it. Allen's been brilliant this year. We saw it in the last episode. Um, and Rochester is good, supposedly. I mean, he's not playing well. Let's not worry about it. Uh, we've got Rosales in goal, a back four of Knicks, Mitchell, Corby and Akers, Rochester and Allen in midfield, Pardo and Robinson out wide, and then Davies and Pearson up front. It is pretty close to the 11 that we we're putting out on the first day of the season. I think we have not varied too much from that team because we've performed way above expectations. So I don't feel the need to flood the 11 with loads and loads of players and try out lots of different things. I think at the moment, my my thoughts are, let's get the points on the board and secure our safety. And then if you want to experiment in the second half of the season, if it's pretty clear we're going to finish mid-table, then at that point, fill your boots and we can do whatever I want. We can bring in some of these uh, other players who came in in the summer, try a few different things out. But at the moment, if this is working well enough to have 15 points in the bag already, we definitely would have taken that at the start of the season and then some. Uh, Mitchell was in there and I thought he was actually going to get that over the top of the goalkeeper somehow. I mean, I, I do feel like today we have a special responsibility to to deal with the last remaining Academy Club. Academy Clubs have been the the, the curse of the save. We've had so much problem with these, with these Academy sides over the years and that it's a beautiful way to see, a, to see an academy side concede a goal. Their goalkeeper doesn't even move for it. This is lovely stuff. Let's have a look at this from the other angle, boys and girls. Rochester playing it out to Robinson. A completely harmless, as you like, cross comes in. There's nobody anywhere near it. And he just hits their defender, their goalkeeper. Just kind of walks after it as if to go, whoa, there's a football there. And I just casually walk towards it. And oh, no. Oh, it's gone. And then it's a goal and it's beautiful. Uh, but yeah, LA Galaxy 2, the only academy team in the league. And we want shot of them because academy teams are a curse. And we, I mean, that some of these might be affiliated with Premier League teams. I don't know. Similar to the Loudoun United, DC United situation we were up against last year. But LA Galaxy have got LA, LA Galaxy in their name, for goodness sake. We want, we want rid of this nonsense. We want to just be competing with the big boys in our own right. I mean, let's not... Let's not pretend that we're not kind of an academy team as well. We're very much affiliated with Bourne Town off in the Premier League, similar to how you've obviously got New York City FC affiliated with Manchester City. But I don't know about them, but we've not been flooded with Bourne talent over the years. Obviously, Robinson, very much involved in the first goal, is a Bourne Town academy product, but hasn't been a Bourne Town player for a long, long time. He's a US national at this point and on loan to us from, I think, North Carolina as his parent club. Does that mean anything? Are they what league are they in? Um, right, Rochester has just given the ball away mid. I mean, it's not even he's not even given the ball away. He never had the ball to give away. It was just pretty poor from him. And 
I had very high hopes for him when we brought him in. He was the solution to the final squad conundrum of we needed a backup, a backup, not, not necessarily a backup, another body for midfield and up front. And we were able to bring in this guy who was four star current ability. He looked like he'd be great in both roles. And he's not exactly hit the ground running so far. We'll give him time because ultimately, like I said in the last episode, Allen seems to play better alongside him. Allen's been brilliant this year. And secondly, like I said earlier in this video, we're winning football matches. We're performing above expectations. I don't want to mess around too much just in case Rochester's the missing piece of the puzzle and we just don't realise it. He might be one of those unsung hero kind of players who's not going to get much in the way of any kind of stat in his own right, not going to get high average ratings or whatever it might be but he does help the team tick over. That being said, we did just see him make an error before. Pearson trying to get the ball across to Davies. He does, and Davies has a shot that ends up cannoning into the LA Galaxy defender, and we've got 20 minutes to go, uh, which I think means it is substitute o'clock. I did bring in a new player, by the way. Omri Hatuka, 21 years old, another five-star potential player. Um, he's a striker who can play on the right-hand side as well. Uh, was at Salt Lake City Monarchs in League One last year, which I believe is the affiliate club of Salt Lake City. Started out at New York, and Salt Lake City actually paid money for him way back when. But I mean, he's had a decent goal scoring record in League One over the years. He's another example, similar to the Josh Pearson transfer last year. He's a player I've brought in because he was just hovering around on a free transfer and scored lots of goals last year. So it seems silly not to give him a try. Um, so give him a try. We shall. Pearson's going to go out onto the left-hand side. Um, the only problem is these two both want to be the false nine. Davies, I think, can do that job pretty comfortably. So we'll push Davies forward and Hatuka can be the false nine. And then we're also going to... What else are we going to do? Should we take off Rochester? Get Korotoski. Korotoski probably would have started the season in midfield if it hadn't have been for the fact that he started the season injured. So... It's not unrealistic for Korotoski to force Rochester out of the team. Uh, Robinson is now tiring. We're going to bring on Axel Torres and Davies can go out to the right. And so we've got four strikers on the pitch currently, which, I mean, I'm not against it, but we're not, we're not exactly peppering the goal with chances either, are we? We're just waiting for somebody to step up and score a goal. Korotoski does well to win the ball back in midfield. A good interception there from him. Finds Davies and Davies gives it to Hatuka, a first chance for us to have a look at him. He plays it back to Korotoski, who plays it over the top for Davies. Um, we've got Torres in the middle. Davies decides to go it alone and forces the corner. And this would be a nice, a nice moment to grab a second goal and just secure the victory for today because at 1-0, I'm always a little bit wary. Um, Cross comes in, Mitchell was there, but his header just balloons up over the crossbar and goes behind for a goal kick. Can we hold on now, please, boys and girls? We, are, we certainly don't need highlights at this end of the pitch. This seems a little bit unnecessary. That stings. Ah, the curse of the academy club strikes again. Look how white their shirts are. I mean, they've all, they've, they've all gone in the same wash as each other. There's not a chance you've got a thousand people all, all of a white shirt, have all washed them independently and none of them have come out a little bit grey, or they've been washed with a red sock or something like that. There's not a chance they're all going to be that bright white against their bright white seats. Too clean. Ugh, LA. Brrr. A draw away from home is fine. We can cope with drawing away from home. Um, we're away in our next game as well, aren't we? Let's just keep picking up points. It'll be fine. Right, we had a lot of tired legs towards the end of that game. So despite me giving my speech about not trying lots of different combinations because we were doing all right, we're having to try a few different combinations because as you can see, we've got a lot of players who are very tired off the back of that game. Davies, Allen, Nix, Corby, Torres, none of them fully fit to go into today's game. Um, Alan Rurgis has finally recovered from his injury as well. So he's able to finally be in contention. We've... Uh, We've thrown a lot of money at this guy and he immediately got injured. I mean, he, he started quite well, grabbed a goal early on, um, but then got injured and it's good to have him back in the mix also. 
So the team for today, Rosales in goal, Mitchell moving out to left back from his, I mean, he's, I would say his usual centre back spot. He's previously been a left back for us for two years, but has played more often at centre back this year, but moves back out to left back. Baron Rurgis in the middle with Akers staying in at right back. Rochester keeps his place because he's fit and everyone else apparently, but Gentry comes back into midfield to play alongside him. Pardo and Robertson keep their spots out wide. Hatuka, though, comes in for the tired legs of Davies and Pearson also keeps his spot up front. Um, apparently, Rurgis and Baron not fully fit. Um, <laughs> well, it'll be fine. I mean, often you play with two centre-backs that aren't fully fit, right? I don't see how that can possibly go wrong. It'll be fine. Where are Hartford in the league? Hartford are 17th in the league. Fingers crossed they're just not very good and won't capitalise on me potentially making a silly decision or two, uh, particularly at the back. But, you know, the other guys were tired. So, Mitchell, having taken the corner, now finds himself in the right wing position. He's played everywhere for us this year. Crosses the ball over and Pardo is there to grab his second goal of the season to put us 1-0 up. It's, uh, I mean, it's a simple goal, isn't it? Corner, gets cleared. Gentry, I don't know why Gentry doesn't put it back into the area himself. Gives it to Mitchell, who hits it with his right foot. Perfect cross that lands on the tip of the toe of Pardo, and it's a decent finish from him to put us 1-0 up. Now what we need to do at some point in the next hour or so of this match is go on and grab a second goal, because that's what we've not been doing. We've drawn a lot of football matches already this season, and in most of them... I mean, I haven't got the statistics in front of me, so I could just be making this up. But I'm pretty... I feel like we've gone ahead in a lot of matches this season and then not been able to hold on to leads. I don't know if that's a fitness thing. I don't know if it's a mentality thing. But it's frustrating. And I would like to win a football match today. Please and thank you. And I think the easiest way to do that, rather than learning to defend and hold on to a lead, which I'm sure... Some of the little smarty pantses down in the comments will be telling me to do. Just maybe don't play with four attackers for the final 10 minutes when you're 1-0 up away from home, Kev. I won't have it. What I would like to do is be 3-0 up by the time we hit the final 15 minutes. And it doesn't matter what formation we play. We can bring on two goalkeepers and play them as our fullbacks at that point. And we're probably not going to concede three goals. That's the key. It's not about defending better. It's about scoring more goals. That's what's got us to this point. And that's what gets us... To the, uh, to the next rung up the ladder as well. So no changes necessary at half time. We're just going to get straight on with things. We would like another goal. It's a really poor turnout here at Hartford. I don't know if they've just got uh, a massive ground and that's why it looks like it looks so sparsely attended and we're used to seeing our little 3,000 capacity heaving full but probably smallest attendance in the league situation. I'd like one of these big grounds. I feel like we've got one of these in our future. I don't know if there's a minimum stadium capacity when you get to the Premier League or what. We'll have to look into it. But we've just scored a second goal. This is what we needed. Pearson with an eighth of the season, our second of the day. And fingers crossed we're going to go on and win a football match here because we haven't done this very often this year. We've gone on and doubled our advantage. Rochester very much involved as well. It's a lovely through ball from him. Uh, Pearson peels away from the defender and just fires it into that bottom corner. And they've given the ball immediately back to us. Hatuka plays it into Pearson. It's a very similar chance to the last one, but this time the defender manages to get over and make the covering tackle. San Antonio, 5-1 up away against Phoenix. Phoenix are above us in the league. Phoenix are not a bad side, and they are getting absolutely smashed by San Antonio today. It looks like the league is already... Um, developing into three breakaway teams, which in a league that only has two automatic promotion spots means there's going to be someone very disappointed at the end of the season. Um, but it also suggests you you could probably put put money on who are going to be the three who go up this season because there's clearly, at the moment, three teams who are much better than the rest of us. We saw it when DC United came to our place and absolutely thumped us. Um, and now it's happening to... Uh, to Phoenix at the hands of San Antonio as well. I wonder if those three teams are the three teams that got relegated from the Premier League last year. Is there just an enormous gulf in quality between the Championship and the Premier League? Because certainly we've seen from just the impact it's had on our progress, DC United have been yo-yoing back and forth 
between the Championship and the Premier League for at, the le at least the last four or five years. So it seems they go up and always come straight back down. But when they come down, they always go straight back up. They're, they're basically the Norwich of America, which suggests, although now I've made the comparison to Norwich, this isn't necessarily the case in England, but it does suggest that there's quite a big gap and they're much better than the teams at this level, but nowhere near as good as the teams at that level. That's what it suggests to me. And we've gone three 0 up here. I think we've we've got a comfortable win here today. Hatuka uh, doing good work, playing it into the path of, Pe path of Pearson. And as it stands, that does move us back into the playoff spots. I say back into. I don't think we've been in the playoff spots at any point this season, um, other than maybe on that first day when we were winning and were very briefly. Oh, we're top of the league, but you know, it's, the league table doesn't count until you're at least three matches in. I think that's the rule. Um. But we, uh, we've got 10 minutes to go here. I did say we want to be 3-0 up at this point and we could bring goalkeepers on. Unfortunately, we only have one goalkeeper on the bench, so I can't test my theory that it's safe to bring goalkeepers on at fullback because I'd want to do both. Or else it's not a fair experiment. So never mind, A. Eh? Maybe another day we'll be able to test that theory. A Champions League final, maybe, because you tend to have two goalkeepers on the bench for one of those. <laughs> that can't go wrong. That'll be fine. Right, Hartford, are st I mean, to be fair to them, they are still attacking, they are still coming at us, but Rosales reminding me today that he is a very, very good goalkeeper who, uh, I guess, just took his eye off the ball a little bit in the last game. I've just noticed the match stats, by the way. We're 3-0 up. We've only had four shots on target in the entire game. Hartford have been all over us, and we are, we've just come here and mugged them. This is, this is a crime scene right now. I'm surprised that we don't have the uh, the FBI getting involved. Hatuka playing it forward to absolutely no one. It's just an aimless lump forward. There's a couple of minutes left in this game. Uh, we've we've got it won. I don't think we're going to throw this away from here, but my goodness, Hartford probably have the right to feel a little bit hard done by today. Ball forward, looking for right. It ends up with Hatuka. He plays it back to Pearson, he's got right ahead of him. It does fall to Tristan Wright, and there's his first championship goal. It's Hartford nil, born four. Um, I feel a little bit guilty at this point, but you know what? We needed this. We deserved something. Not necessarily today we've deserved this, but in general, we have played very well this year and had a few games, like the one against LA Galaxy, where we've been the better team and just the world has conspired against us and it's ended up a draw. So I quite like the fact that we've just been able to get a 4-0 a win in a game that probably a draw would have been the fairest result in. I'll take it. Um, but that is where we wrap this video up. As you can see, we are in our usual spot in a newly promoted season. We're hovering around the playoffs. Um, if we get into the playoffs this year, we'll probably lose them. You know how this save works. It just seems to be the shape of the save. That says it all about that game, by the way. 10 saves from Rosales. <laughs> Could have easily been a 4-4 draw if we'd have had a, a slightly worse goalkeeper. Is he considered the best goalkeeper in the league? Probably not because there's so much quality in the league. No, I mean, this guy's probably... Yeah, he's an Austrian international. This is the kind of nonsense we're up against in this league. Absolute insanity. Um, I'm just going to check. San Antonio. No, they were mid-table in this league last year. El Paso were a playoff team last year, so they're not the three relegated teams. DC United were relegated, but the other two have just exploded from this league, I guess. There's two players in this league who've already got 15 goals this season. He's, he scored 15 goals last year. He's got 15 goals in his first 10. This, I mean, drug test, maybe? Anyone, anyone, anyone got a drug test for us? Maybe. If you've enjoyed that, please make sure you leave a nice big thumbs up on there for me. Subscribe to the channel for daily Football Manager videos. And thank you very much for watching.